All right, let's go to the ice right now. Uh, the Maple Leafs are set to kick off their playoff run tonight in Boston against the Bruins. Toronto looking to get that proverbial monkey off their back after failing to win a playoff series against the Bruins since 1959. The Leafs, of course, lost in heartbreaking fashion in 2018, 2019, and seven games to boot. Teams also faced off in 2013 when the Bruins came back, being down 4-1 to one to beat the Leafs. And that was uh, that's when the scar tissue started building up. For more on this, we're now joined live in studio by John Viveros, host of Hot Take Hockey Podcast. Thanks for joining us here live on CB24. Now, do you, I don't want to talk about the past. I'm yeah. so sick of it. Born and raised in the city. You hear about 1967. You hear about these Game 7s. Let's talk about the Leafs in 2024. What are their chances right now? How do you like their odds against the Bruins team, who are, who are actually kind of slowing down a little bit heading into the playoffs? Yeah, it looked like they had secured that top spot in the division, and then, of course, they kind of kept working themselves down, and Florida took that spot. But I think a lot of people are worried just because of the season record. I mean, the Leafs are 0-2-2 against the Boston Bruins this season, but I think when you look at the team itself, they're a lot more prepared. I mean, I know you said you didn't want to talk about these past teams, oh, but yeah. uh, you only got five guys. I mean, yeah, it's the five core guys that experienced that, right? Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Morgan Riley, William Nylander, John Tavares. Everyone else didn't see those disappointments, right? Um, and I think that's the huge advantage here. Tyler Bertuzzi coming in, former Bruin last year. He knows their system. Max Domi, he knows the Toronto market. His dad played here. Uh, you look at different personalities, whether it's Ryan Reeves, Jake McCabe, Joel Edmondson. These are all physical guys that they brought in to deter the big bad Bruins, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you're a lot more prepared for a team like the Bruins. And even if you can go past that, a team like Florida, a team like Tampa. Um, so myself, for sure, I think I'm a lot more content with the, the structure of the team. But um, I can see why a lot of people, especially with the Toronto market so loud, mm -hmm. that they can see that the past disappointments are, are probably going to repeat itself. But um, I think the team itself, if you ignore that it's the Toronto Maple Leafs and just look at the team itself, they're a lot more prepared this year. Yeah, and you know what, you talk about Willie Nylander, he did not do the morning skate yesterday. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he might dress tonight. So no. if he doesn't, what kind of loss is that? It's a huge loss. I mean, the, the whole advantage this year for the Toronto Maple Leafs is this balanced attack. I mean, I don't think the Boston Bruins are as good as we've seen them in past years. And I think where we've seen the lineup so far for the Leafs, you've had Austin Matthews on one line, Mitch Marner on a second line, and then William Nylander actually on a third line. So if you can have that balanced attack against the Boston Bruins, that's your clear advantage if you're Toronto because of the question marks on defense, question marks on goaltending. I think that's where Boston's clear advantage is. But if William Nylander can be in that lineup, that's the, the balanced attack. And, of course, I mean, you're talking about a guy, 100 point. I mean, he just signed the long-term extension. He's one of the best players, one of the best right wingers in the league. So um, a huge loss. I think that's without saying. But um, I do think the Leafs have enough, enough depth at this point that maybe for one game they can overcome it. But, I mean, it would be a huge loss to start the series if he's not there. Yeah, not great. Well, you talked about the other players who, who are new faces. But not really if you're, you know, a fan of, you know, Ty Domi and now his kid, Max. Yeah. He, he put up this thing on his Instagram. Uh, I've been watching it. Yeah. It's, I think it's about a two-minute highlight reel. It's, it's him as a kid on his dad's lap during the playoffs. It just fires you up. Is, is he one of those depth guys? Uh, he's actually not a depth guy. He, he's on the first line, right? Mm -hmm. So is he one of those new faces, one of those guys who could step up in the playoffs and really add a spark to this team? 100%. I mean, he's kind of served as a depth guy in, in past teams in the right. playoffs. He was on the Dallas Stars. He was on the Carolina Hurricanes, all kind of in like a third-line role, but scoring big goals for the Carolina Hurricanes. He's, he has scored in, in a Game 7, right? Mm -hmm. and I think we've talked about the Leafs in Game 7s. Those are where the disappointments come. And so the fact that he knows the market, his dad played here, and he scored before in a Game 7. I think he comes in here, and he's been the perfect complement for Austin Matthews. Mitch Marner went down with an injury. It's always kind of been known, oh, Marner and Matthews have to stay together. I think that's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Bertuzzi's a playmaker himself, but he also brings a different element, both Domi and Bertuzzi. Matthews gets roughed up a little bit in the game. Here comes Max Domi coming into his defense. So I think that's a huge part, especially against the Boston Bruins. Mm -hmm. If Brad Marchand wants to bring in his shenanigans on Austin Matthews, you have two guys in there that are going to deter, deter it right away. So I think that's kind of what Max Domi brings, the playmaking, his presence. But also, again, I think he's also going to bring in some goal scoring as well. And uh, series predictions? Series prediction, yeah. No, I think it's, it's tough to go into a series against Boston, and especially with that Game 7 tag always there. But um, I think for the Leafs to win this series, and actually in the Sheldon Keefe era, they've been a better road team. So I think steal a first game here in Boston and then potentially win in six. So I think that's kind of where my prediction's at right now. All you right. don't want to take it back to TD Garden for Game 7. No. I think the stakes are way too high. Yeah. Um, so if you can try to close it out in Game 6 the way you did last year, I know it was in Tampa, but uh, this year hopefully in Toronto. That city is buzzing. No, I don't know. I'm not going to say, you know, are they going to win the Stanley Cup. Is, is there a team out there, maybe a Canadian team, that you think has a real shot to, to bring the Stanley Cup back north of the 49th parallel? 
yeah, there's four chances this year, right? I know. So you look at Winnipeg, you look at Edmonton, you look at Toronto. And I do think with Vancouver, they're kind of the new team coming yeah. in. Like those that other three unexpected. teams. Yeah, those other three teams have that playoff experience. Um, I think if you look at the path, like obviously you can look at the teams itself, who's the most prepared. But I think the path itself, Edmonton's beat LA the last two years in the playoffs. They played them a third time. So I think Edmonton, two of the best players in the league, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisettle. I think on paper right now, in, in terms of a path, a clear path to the Stanley Cup final, they probably have the best chance. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, here, we're in Toronto. So, uh, I, I do, the, the passion wants to say Toronto's got the best chance, but um, I'll probably go with the Edmonton Oilers just based on how things stand right now. That can count as a hot take. Yeah. That's, like, that's like a, a sizzling take. Yeah, a little I'll bit. Take yeah. That. All right. Okay. But who, who and not Canadian, is there an American team, do you think? A true Stanley Cup champ favorite, you think? Would it be Dallas? Yeah, I think Dallas uh, has been really electric this year. I'm also going if Igor Shosturgeon for the New York Rangers can really step up. I mean, he's one of the better goalies, I would say, just looking at on paper in the playoffs. Again, playoff, I, I feel like everyone always brings up these season records and just kind of what we see on paper. But, I mean, playoffs is a different animal. It so is. it's just it's so hard to predict. But um, I think I look at the New York Rangers, especially a Canadian guy like Alexi Lafreniere stepping up, who was a first overall pick. I think he could be an X factor there. So also look out for the New York Rangers. They could have a path on that east side. True that. All right, yeah. So we'll say Leafs 1A. Yeah. And, and you'll say maybe Rangers, maybe Dallas Stars. I'll say Carolina Hurricanes. Oh, I like it. That's me. Right. That's me. They're Jake deep. Getzel. They, yeah. They're deep. They're hungry. All right, thank you very much. John Viveros, host of Hot Take Hockey. Appreciate it. Everyone, like and subscribe and listen to his stuff.